As New York continues to implement a state law designed to ensure more unwanted food is either being donated or recycled in an environmentally friendly fashion, state regulators have released an updated list of businesses and institutions who will be covered by this mandate in 2023. To discuss the expanded list of food scrap generators and the implementation of the 2019 state food donation and food scraps recycling law more broadly, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by the state's compost queen, Sally Rowland, who is the chief of the Organics Reduction and Recycling Section at the State Department of Environmental Conservation. Welcome back to the show, Sally. Thanks, Dave. So starting in January, entities that generate, uh, on average, uh, two or more tons of wasted food in a week have had to donate edible food uh, to the extent practicable and recycle uh, the remaining food if an organic recycler is within 25 miles of their operation. Do you have any sense of what the first component of that requirement uh, has meant for the donated food in New York? Uh, For example, has there been a significant uptick in food donations in 2022 compared to 2021? Yes, actually there has. Both uh, the law itself and we have a contract with Feeding New York State, which is a nonprofit organization that represents the food banks of New York State to assist with implementing the law and help the food waste generators donate additional materials. What we found is it's not only new donations that say if a a generator never donated before a grocery store, some other type of food waste generator. It's also looking at what they're currently donating. So you may have a grocery store that donates dry goods, but doesn't know, they could also donate fruits and vegetables. So Feeding New York State has done a great job of reaching out to these generators that are under the law and saying, let's not only look at whether you're donating or not, let's look at all the materials you're generating. And there's, is there additional material there to be donated? We only, starting from last October, October of 21 till now, they've just, the Feeding New York State reached the milestone of 1 million new pounds of food donation just under this effort. So as we all know, starting with COVID and continuing through current times, that the need is out there. There's no reduction in need for donated food. But this effort has been great in producing those new pounds, and getting at those fresh fruits and vegetables, those you know materials that the food banks are always looking for, they're harder to get to get out to those in need, those more nutritious materials. So when you and I talked uh, last year, as state regulators were putting the final touches on how this program would be implemented, uh, you noted that uh, when Vermont and Massachusetts uh, implemented similar programs, they saw uh, between a 30 to 40 percent increase in food donations. And you said that a 30 percent growth would be phenomenal in in New York. Do you have a sense at this point whether we're at that 30 percent growth uh, in, in donations or is it still something to aspire to? We haven't gone through a whole year yet, so we don't have the yearly number, but Feeding New York State seems very confident that they can get up to multi-millions of pounds each year under this program. We're also looking to uh, amend their current contract because obviously once they get out there and they say, okay, there's more food available, now they have to figure out how do you get it to the food banks. So is it more trucking, more drivers? So we're looking, can we amend their contract to provide more funding? So DEC and the state can be provide more funding to the food banks to have trucking to get that additional material into the food banks and then distribute it out. One other thing we're looking at is not everything should has to go to a large food bank. It can go directly from a grocery store or restaurant to a local provider like a soup kitchen or food pantry. Mm-hmm. So is there a way we can help fund local transport, just a van or something like that for local transport and pickup? And what about the second component of the food donation and recycling law? Has there been a significant increase in food that's ending up at, say, composting facilities or anaerobic digesters? I think it's coming slowly, which is to be expected because it takes a while. Obviously, if you're going to build a facility, it's siting and permitting and financing, all that doesn't happen overnight. We have had a few new facilities come online in the last year have come through and get approval from DEC. 
and a lot of interest in the state. We've talked to a number of companies, but it's going to be a process. It's going to take a number of years, I think, to get um, much more capacity online to make this a much more amenable to be doing. One thing we are seeing is very interesting is Obviously, the food scraps law affects the large generators, but we're seeing a lot of interest on the residential side, too, even though they're not affected by the law. People want to do the right thing. So we're seeing local drop-offs for food scraps, and that helps to sustain facilities, too, because the, the more material, obviously, they can process, the easier it is for them to handle the cost of getting a facility and keeping a facility operating. And when you're talking about uh, the permitting process and launching of new facilities, you're speaking about uh, the, I guess, infrastructure across the state uh, of organic uh, recyclers that uh, has become more of, I guess, what, an an attractive industry to get into in in light of the requirement that the state uh, has that basically if there is one of these uh, facilities, like a composting facility or an anaerobic digester within 25 miles, you know, you have to use them. So the idea that there's this uh, market that's waiting to be tapped is uh, something that's attractive and maybe promoting the growth of these recyclers moving forward. Definitely. If you think of it from a facility standpoint, if you're going to start a compost facility or expand a compost facility, you need to know that that material you're going to take in is available. So you need to know those food scraps are out there. So the law provides that incentive to say, look, these material has to be recycled because obviously you're going to make it, it costs you money. It's an investment to have, you know, design and set up your facility. So you need to know that materials there. So this is kind of that spark. The law gives that spark to say here, we're trying to generate that resource, a separated food scrap from the rest of the waste stream that then that entity, that recycler, the compost facility could say, okay, now I have new sources of input to my facility to make a product. Well, for listeners just joining us, we're getting a status update on the state's 2019 food donation and food scraps recycling law. And our guest is Sally Rowland, who is the chief of the organics reductions and recycling section at the State Department of Environmental Conservation. And is this something that's really just uh, trying to attract private entities to develop organic recyclers? Or is there a possibility that we might see more municipalities get in the business of opening food recyclers um, and composting uh, facilities. I mean, is there a chance for local governments to say, hey, I I could make money off this and I want to do this? Oh, I think you're exactly right. I think it's going to be a combination of both and it's going to be may be publicly owned and privately run, which Mm. happens. We really see that across the board in solid waste management. But yeah, there is a lot of uh, municipalities that run yard waste composting facilities and converting those to accept some food scraps is certainly a way to go. It's a great thing for municipalities to provide that service for the local businesses, as well as having a compost product they can sell. Bethlehem, a local one to the Albany area, the town of Bethlehem does that. So they're one who started with the yard waste compost facility and now accepts food scraps as well. So as you evaluate the development of new organic recyclers across New York, is there going to be any sort of judging about whether we need additional incentives or whether we need to change the the overview like permitting process or or are you happy with the the pace so far we're always yeah looking at what are the obstacles for more development of organics recycling uh on the regulatory front we revised the solid waste regulations dealing with organics recycling back in 2017 so it wasn't too long ago so we think they're pretty good there are both exemptions and registrations, which is kind of an in-between, and permitting requirements. So there's a registration for a fairly good-sized food scrap, so it's just a base, a very simple process. On the grant side, municipal, we do municipal grants for recycling facilities, including organic, so we're trying to advertise that those are available. We feel we're in a pretty good place right now to support these activities. So it's my understanding that 231 additional entities are going to qualify as food scrap generators covered by this law in 2023. How does that compare to the total number covered now? And what is it about uh, these 200 plus 
businesses and institutions that uh, gets them onto the list uh, for next year? That adds to about 20% to what the uh, current list is. Okay. And it, it is based on employee count. What we do every year is we uh, look at a national Hoover's, which is a national database of business information for those for businesses and it has employee numbers. So every year we reevaluate data from them to see and then use a calculation of how that equates to waste generation. So obviously this year, those 200 were had enough employee count that brought them under the umbrella of the law. So if you wanted to cover more entities, uh, maybe ones that produce less than two tons uh, of food a week on average, is that something DEC could do unilaterally through writing new regs? Or would you need a new version of the law with like a lower threshold in order to cover more entities? We would need a newer version of the law. Yeah, the law itself sets out that number. So in order for us, we can't do it without a change to the law. And finally, any other uh, new announcements or, I guess, uh, plans that are under development uh, with regards to food donations or uh, food scrap recycling that uh, you want to share? Yes, actually, we have uh, we've just entered into a contract, DEC has, with uh, the Center for Echo Technology, also known as CET. They're out of Massachusetts, but they've helped a number of New England states on technical assistance and outreach related to food scraps. And they're going to be assisting us. It's a three-year contract. It's free assistance for businesses, municipalities, institutions, both on technical assistance on how to get a program started to donate food scraps, donate food and recycle food scraps. Also helps organics recyclers on design and operation facilities. So we're excited to have them we kind of call them the boots on the ground to free assistance to try to move these programs forward. Well, we've been speaking with Sally Rowland, who is the chief of the Organics Reduction and Recycling Section at the State Department of Environmental Conservation. Sally, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Support for the Capitol Press Room is provided by New York State United Teachers, a union of professionals in education, human services, and health care.